Welcome back, everybody. Joe Everest, the fence expert. If you've watched any of my other review videos, then you know what you're in for. Jeremy goes out and finds videos that he thinks that I'd like to review for you guys. The reviews typically have a positive spin. We all know how many negative reviews are out there in YouTube land, and I'd like to change that. So without further review, here we go. This is Joe Evers, the fence expert. My family's been perfecting their way of building fence for over 60 years, three generations. While there's more than one way to build a fence, I'm here to share with you our way. All right, so this reaction video is a little bit different than the others. This one's titled, How Not to Install a Wood Privacy Fence, The Worst Job Ever. Uh, so this, this reaction video will actually just be uh, me kind of giving suggestions on how this fence probably could have been better installed. I think we'll all agree it was not installed correctly, but how, how this fence could have been installed better. Uh, also, if you want to watch the original video, we'll have it linked in the description below. Cool. All right, guys. So listen, so I'm over at my neighbor's house. This is my neighbor, Anthony. Hey, Where you there hey, you go. Man. All right. So we're over here. He actually rents the house here and he's been here for a long time. And the landlord was going to put a, yeah. allowed to put a, put a fence in here and they used a professional company. I think we'll use the term professional company a little loosely and you'll understand why here in just a minute. We are mind blown. I mean, honestly, he called me up. He said, Vic, you got to come over here and check out what they did to my yard. The, <laughs> this is just, this is just I'm not mind blown. This is mind blown. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip the camera around and I'm gonna show you how not to install a fence. Exactly. I mean, honestly, exactly. this is basically how not to install a fence. I'm afraid to like flip the camera around. All right, so we're gonna flip the camera. You have to do it, you have to do it. I'm gonna have to do it. All right, here we go. <laughs> we are right here. The company came out in one day. One day. One day did this whole job. They bought paneling. So guys, this is why when you have a contoured yard, why you cannot use paneling. First of all, they- So I'll say this. Well, first and foremost, we build on site. We'll, we'll stick build this fence on site. But, you know, talking to guys, and it's typically guys in the Northern United States, they predominantly only use panels. You know, for the majority of the projects, they only use panels. And I've seen pictures of their work where they've contoured it up and down slopes. So it's not to say that panels can't be used on a sloped yard. This obviously is not the proper installation of these panels. Uh, also, these panels, I would I would guess these panels were picked up at one of the uh, big box stores. So rather than uh, two by fours, those look like maybe one by threes on the rails. Quality panel behaves a lot differently and a lot better than, in, uh, we'll call it an economy panel that you pick up at a box store. Also, what is going on with these posts? These posts are forever taller than the fence. Didn't pull any permits, we believe, or any or any oh, kind of did. HOA code, because this is a six-foot fence. This is a six-foot fence. We are only allowed a five-foot fence. So if they would have pulled permits and HOA facts and all that stuff, they would have known that this would have not. So that's, a, that's one thing to note. So it sounds like his neighborhood and the, the HOA covenants and restrictions restrict the height of a fence to five foot. I think he's probably right. The contractor, and I'll use that term lightly, probably didn't pull a permit. If we're looking at all the shortcuts taken in this fence, I'd say they likely didn't pull a permit. But even if they had, the city isn't responsible for issuing permits based on HOA restrictions, right? So the the city or municipality is going to look at, does it meet their, their rules per se uh, to how the fence is to be built? So this fence could be built. It's got a lot of problems, but it could meet the the standards of the city and municipality. A lot of them require no taller than six foot in the backyard, four foot in the front yard. Uh, so even if you do get a fence permit, you still have to check with your local homeowner association, covenants and restrictions, if you have one, to see what they call for as, ta as far as height of fence, style of fence, that sort of thing. That worked in the first place because we're only allowed a five foot fence. That's why I did a five foot fence in my house. All right. This is why you can't use paneling on contoured yards like ours, because watch this. If you leave the poles, if you leave the poles just <laughs> sitting there like, it's all right. Yeah. Right? yeah, this is a professional company. I'm not gonna blast any names or anything like this, and I know, okay, I know not a lot of companies do this. No. This is probably a brand new company, few and far between, so I'm not putting fence. So I would probably agree, it's either new company or what we're seeing a lot right now, I mean, we're in the middle of a really good economy. You know, the economy right now is, is has a lot of steam to it. 
So you're seeing contractors in other trades also get into fencing. Predominantly, it used to be you would see a lot of landscapers also do fencing. Makes sense. They're in and around your yard. Uh, anymore, you're seeing home remodelers. You're seeing roofers. You're seeing siding guys. You're seeing all sorts of folks get into uh, fence building. And unfortunately, this is sometimes a result of going with a company that doesn't specialize in fencing. This company's on blast or anything like that. But this was a professional, legit, paid for job. Check this out. I, I, I'm like mind blown right now. Look at the gaps under the yard. Check this out. Dude, check this out. And plus, you can't pack, you can't pack them. I mean, literally. Look at this. You can't pack the fence. That's the other concerning part about these posts being so tall. You know, they were likely, they're likely using eight foot posts I mean, eight foot is a standard length in a four before post. Four before eights, four before tens, four before nines really aren't you know nine foot long. Uh, four before typically aren't aren't readily available at the big box stores. Uh, so I would guess these were eight foot posts. This post looks to be almost a foot above that fence. So we know those pickets are six foot long. That means that post is seven foot out of the ground. Some quick math tells us that post is likely only a foot in the ground. The way he's shaking it, I would guess there's not concrete around it. You know, they might have subscribed to the uh, dirt pack method. Um, But even if there is concrete around it, it shouldn't shouldn't move like that. So the concrete hasn't set properly. And again, like I say, it's probably only a foot in the ground. Look at this. I'm surprised. We had a major windstorm with hail, uh, tornadoes over here today. Can't finish. Look at this. Look at this. Can't finish nailing them in. Look, look at the gap. Look, look right here. Look right here. This fence is gonna go down. This was at that. This was down. This fence is gonna go down in the first place because this has to go. This was after the storms left. After everything was gone. Oh, this. We put two by four. Check this out. Put two by four because the fence did not reach. So probably what they did was uh, they placed their post. I would usually say they set their post. I'm not convinced these posts were actually set with anything. Uh, they probably placed their post before they put the panels up, uh, and they got their post spacing wrong. Uh, so you know, the guys that are using uh, pre-built panels, they know the exact length of the panel, and so typically they'll have a story stick or uh, some sort of jig that will tell them exactly where each post needs to be placed so that the panels work out just right. Uh, obviously that didn't happen in this case they didn't they didn't gap it long enough like they put they put it probably like eight and a half feet yeah and that this is why i did a seven foot span that's and you, non-panel that's how you fix it though two by four yeah that's if you really need if this is what you do this is how you fix it <laughs> <laughs> that's how you fix it professionally look at that, professionally you professionally. put it just stick a two by four yeah and it'll it'll be it'll be good professionally All right. and seeing that two by four on there shows you the difference in what a two by four looks like with Panels are built with two by fours rather than a one by three. All right, so let's show the back corner over here. Same thing here. Look, it didn't fit. Nope. So they just put a two by four going across the side. Look at that. Look at that gap. I mean. So that gap is one of the disadvantages of using a stair-stepped fencing style. Uh, We talked a while ago about the different ways of installing or handling contoured ground. One of the ways is a stair-step. This is the disadvantage to that is you will have a gap at the low side of the fence. Dude, and Anthony's a big dude. He's tall. He's six foot, and he, he oh, my God. Look at this. I'm shaking it. Oh, yeah, there's, there's nothing. This, but this is okay. this, this how you fix the end of the fence. Yeah, so they didn't, so the, the end of the fence wasn't good enough. They're crooked. Yep. Poles aren't straight. So they took this piece right here, right there. Look at that thing. And they're going to fix it. And they're going to stick this right in here like that. Now, coming over here, look how there's nothing straight about this thing whatsoever. I don't want to shake it because I don't want to do any personal damage. I'll shake stuff. it they're going to tear it down. They get back. Yeah, this fence has got to go. So, in our HOA code, people said in my video, they said, um, you know, why is it not look straight? Well, we have to follow the contour yeah, of the yard. So, the yard. all right, so coming over here, this is the neighbor's yard. So, this is the other way of handling contours is to slope the fence or follow terrain of the ground or follow the slope of the terrain uh, with your fence. So rather than a stair step, stepping down and then moving over, you know, the fence that we're looking at now is likely built on site. And this is a contoured style rather than 
a stair step style that you see that the other guys have installed. This is professionally, professionally. Right. Now look, we you have this hill right here, right? Yep. Goes down. Perfect. Okay, and then comes up. If you notice the top of the fence follows the contour of the yard, and then there's that hill and goes up. Okay, that's how it's supposed to be. That's piece by piece. Yep. That's that's our code for our HOA. Same thing with back here. Come around and it goes around. But then come over here. This is a professional fence company now. Guys, if you have the ability to do this fence yourself. I so, guys, let's talk about this. So, this company or these individuals sold themselves as a professional fence company or fencing contractor. This is the reason why we'll have to face licensing at some point. No one wants to. I'm not an advocate, per se, of everyone having to have a license similar to what you'd have to have to be, you know, a, a master plumber or master electrician. I think we're gonna have we're gonna see some sort of that system because of junk like this. You know, guys that say that they are a professional fence company and then they provide work like this. I think that's a re this is a very good example of why we would have to face licensing. If this stuff continues, I highly recommend doing it yourself, but check this out. Look at the gaps underneath that. Look at that. I feel bad. I mean, thank God you didn't have to spend your money on it. Okay. Now we're going to come over here. Let's move over this way. Yeah. How are you supposed to get out? So, so here's the, so here is now that you would think that they would see that every other fence in the neighborhood is five foot. I mean, really? That's nuts. Really? I'm mind blown. I mean, this has been set for three hours now, and nothing. it's m packed in with mud. mud. I mean, what the heck? Okay. But still, now, how, are you, how are you supposed to get out? Yep. Now I'm lock, lock me in. You're locked in. How are you gonna get out? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm in. Okay, I can't. Oh, look at that. Hey, look at those nice screws yeah. right there. Look at the nice screws going through the uh, board. So somebody hurts. Well, you got kids, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I know you do, but you know, look at that. Nice so what happened here, they just used a regular panel and tried to make it into a gate, but, but they didn't align, they didn't align the height of the fence. So you have structure on the gate, not meeting structure on the latch post. So they set their latch first into, uh, into that structure, but then that gave them no choice, but to come below the structure. Now, listen, there's, there's a lot of issues here, but how hard would it have been to add a two by four? vertically between that structure and that's a whole nother conversation too that this gate doesn't have any sort of structure to it that will support it as a gate uh, it wouldn't have been hard at all to add a two by four for structure and so that those legs aren't exposed it screws in here oh hey nice foot so i can't get out of the fence I can't. <laughs> so if I have a fire and I can't get out of my front of my house, I'm yeah. stuck. I gotta you, jump. I gotta jump a six foot fence. You, you knock this one down. You could probably oh, get I'll out. Knock it down, really. <laughs> you could probably get I'll out. Probably right. knock it down now. Yeah, I wouldn't mess with it because this is completely the biggest hack job I'd ever seen. So here's what I'm talking about. You can't have this. This is not meant to be. You don't go through there. You would go through that. This is. I mean, I'd rather really have it up here. At least up reach there. Over. Right. And take it. But now look at how this is what they, they did. They told me we're almost done. I like no, no, you're not. I mean, look at the, you look at this fence to this. How are you done? The gate. There's not even at the very minimum. Like on my fence gates, I messed up. I didn't put my cross supports yet, and, I, and it's actually holding up okay. But there's nothing. This is just a paneling that is sawed right down the middle. So typically, when bracing a gate, you would brace it. Uh, depending on how big the gate is, what the angle of that cross brace would be. But from the bottom hinge up to the top latch side. So do you create kind of a, a, a backwards Z? But yeah, there, there's actually, they just took a panel and cut it and made it a gate. Uh, you'd want to see significantly more structure on this gate or else it'd, it'd sag and twist pretty quickly. Yeah. That's it. They used the old one for over Yeah, here. and they just continued on. They just made it, cut it, and made a gate yeah, out of it. Piece right there. That's piece. Wow. That's the whole panel. They cut that the and they just cut it right down to make a gate. Yep. Unbelievable. If I cut my hand on that and I, I gotta get out, I'm. You're doing that, be. I mean, that's just that's just ridiculous. Yeah. And it's not now, intriguing. Now look at this beautiful. You know, this is that's how. Perfect. You know, these nice caps. They actually, you can see the pencil lines where they actually did this professionally. But yeah, that's. That's sharp, man. Yeah, he can get out of his fence. But he can get out of his fence. 
I don't understand that react. Like I, I get that you need to get out of the fence, but this reaction's a bit much. I think you could probably have this reaction to the fence as a whole, though. You know, yeah. look at look at the wood though. That's the cheapest wood you can get. Uh, I'd be rotted. I'm uh, mind blown. There's so many wrong ways and so many right ways that you could do a fence. You could do it yourself. It's super inexpensive, but. So this video was made before all the lumber increases that we saw last year, continuing into this year. Uh, lumber isn't what I would call cheap uh, anymore, unfortunately. You have, you can't. This is, this is bad. I'm still blown by the two by four. I'm, I'm just. This thing is like, I can't even fathom. So one thing about the post. So if they were set to the correct depth, which they're not, but if they were. They would be closer to the two before. They'd still stick out above. So typically what we would have done, which granted this was installed with panels, but typically we would cut those posts before the pickets ever went up. That way they are nice and in line with that top two before. Gives it a little bit nicer look, which granted one of quite a few things is going uh, wrong here. Yeah, this is just mind-blowing because we wanted to show you before they come and rip this thing out. Oh, they're going to rip it out. Yeah, this, this has to, to come out. Yeah, we, at least they tried to do like a... Do yeah, yeah, that one that one was really good too. Look right there. They actually tried right there. <laughs> That's crazy. So I was looking at this before. So they they cut that panel down. You can see that bottom two before just ending into the dirt, which maybe maybe they trenched over to the post. I doubt it. They probably just cut it. Uh, but this it's a bit of a train wreck throughout. There to do some kind of slant cut. I don't know, man. Yeah, well, man. you'll get it fixed up. I mean, it, you know. Oh, yeah, they get, they're going to get fixed. Yeah, so. So, guys, let me know uh, what you would have done differently with this uh, with this fence, which I, I can see the comments getting lengthy. So, why don't you let me know if I missed anything or if uh, you do anything differently than how I would say we would have handled it. Uh, let me know in the comments below. Again, if you'd like to watch the original video, we'll link it in the description below. Uh, but until next time, I'm Joe Everest, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors. We'll see you next time.